everybody. I am doing another amazing client session. The focus is on pressure on the right and left sides of the head. So I'm gonna be sharing distance energy healing and psychic wisdom to support the client. You actually sent me a photo here to really identify the location. What I find interesting, and we're gonna dive into this and see what I find out, but when we start experiencing pressure or sensations of physical ailment, sometimes they can be related to unresolved memories. They can be related to um, unresolved emotions. Really curious to see how this presents itself. I recently did a session where we were doing healing for your head with your higher self. So I'll put a link in the description for those who are interested in checking it out. Thank you so much for another opportunity to support you here. And thank you so much for sharing with us on YouTube. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, go to my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. You can book a session there. You should also consider joining my Patreon community. It's an awesome place for us to engage in live stream experiences. I'm also offering for a limited time free sessions depending on the tier you choose. Abby Normals Wisdom Quest is on Patreon. So go to patreon.com slash Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. You'll find me there. All right, shall we get started? Okay, I'm gonna relax here. Okay. All right, I'm just taking a look at that image that you sent me and just doing that here in my mind, but I'm also just sort of creating an experience, connecting with your energy field. Connecting with your higher self and guides. Connecting with God. First thing that echoes to me is there's something that you're stubborn about that you don't want to heal. Always fun when you hear that because I guarantee you're saying, of course I want to heal whatever I can heal. But what part of you is saying that? <laughs> There are parts beneath the surface that are very stubborn. You want to live with pain. You don't want to heal because you want to live with pain. If, pa if pain could be love, and there was no more pain left in your life, there would be no more love left. Place my hands on these two sides here, okay? There's no coincidence about anything, even the photo you sent, the specific look of this human, right? Um, and then the red, um, that's sort of highlighting the area. It's interesting because in the energy world, I, I see the same picture here. And I see you as this like bulletproof form. And then I place my hands on the red glowing lights. They're just sort of emanating, okay? But you're not bulletproof. And you don't have to be so tough and strong. Because your light is what makes you strong. I'm supposed to re rework something of a program about pain and love and their relationship with one another. So love and pain then overlap and become one source. But you can live without pain so that you just have the source of love. And love that nurtures and heals is what helps you to thrive and grow your strongest. So wherever those blocks are, those walls are that says, no, without pain, I, I will be alone or I will, um, there's something energetically attracting that as your balance, as your nucleus, as your, as your mom and dad, as your, as your love, okay? Without it, it's like loss. 
It's like you're not you anymore. I'm turning the red into green. And I'm also showing all the different colors of the rainbow. Green is like a really great friend that makes you laugh or cheers you up all the time. Whether you're having a bad day or a good day, they're just really good at making you smile all the time. And I see that green is doing this for these red um, glowing parts. And it's almost like green in in green's family are all the colors of the rainbow and I start to see um, from within green we have red and yellow and orange and and cyan and blue like indigo and violet like we can really see the rainbow developing here and what I'm doing is I'm taking this color and I'm using it like a salve not just light, but actual um, material. And I kind of rub it all over your head, okay? I rub it all over your head, but I also let it absorb in here as light and, and salve, okay? But also, <clears throat> excuse me, like laughter and friendship. Good memories. Hmm. I'm bringing your energy down now because there's something um, <sighs> as we put this energy in there has to be energy that wants to come out because it's either wants to hang out and play with the new energies or it wants to um, try to disorient this transformation we're creating and if it wants to try to disorient it um, then it starts to kind of balloon out and um, so so either a I could try to um, pull it out but really everything is telling me to pull it downward okay and let it go through your feet and into the earth Oh, man. <sighs> I'm holding you steady. You are grounded. This energy is moving now from the top of your head down through your face, your neck, your shoulders, your torso, your legs, through your feet and into the earth. The energy is moving through your body now downward and is going into the earth. The earth is absorbing this energy. And the rainbow colors are actually um, circulating around your head and you're feeling them here in these pressure points. And you're allowing yourself to feel safe with these colors and feel safe with the joy of these colors on the right and left sides, but all around your head within your third eye, within your crown, within these energy bodies, we're letting this rainbow in, okay? Because it's actually a real true representation of who you are. And there's no need to resist that. Hmm. So I'm going to let that do its thing, but I am going to have to take a look at some other spaces, okay? So we're going to let that continue to do its thing over here, and then I'm going to open it up to the unknown. Then we're going to go through some deeper layers, okay? <sighs> Again, you're bulletproof. I'm walking to a solid you. You're under pressure by yourself. Yourself is putting you under pressure. Yourself is a solid. <sighs> I 
I touch the material of your skin. It doesn't have necessarily a, a feeling or a sensation. It feels like a nothingness, okay? I'm going to become part of the nothingness that surrounds you. It has a very thin layer, just like the skin, okay? You're trying to shield or block something and you don't want me to find it. You don't want me to get to it. I say everything is accessible to me. Everything that you are helps me to find where this is. Everything that you try to block me from is just a direct pathway to it. And I feel inspired to go slow, okay? I'm just still a part of the skin. And the more you become aware that I'm a part of your skin, as a sort of metal man, the more you want me to stop, the more you want me to leave, the more you want me to go away. And I say, it's okay, ego. You're not the only one, by the way, going through a major ego transformation. There's interesting timing for this. And once that ego transformation happens, you're going to be introduced to yourself again without the resistance there. Because the ego just needs some support right now. And just relaxing down and letting you grow. No wonder pressure in the head, right? Is it memories? Is it emotion? Or is it an ego resistance building up in there? The safety and security to reaching the next level of who you are. Hmm. I'm still the skin, and I'm defining that this being is ego, okay? And I say, ego, you are the path. Inside this metal man is some kind of blue material. It's dark, it's kind of a sandy, wet sand. Dark blue. It has without sort of sound or emotion really, it's just a pretty blah. You start to see that it is sparkling. I give it Something glamorous and beautiful, special. It says that the sparkles are like pinpricks, that it hurts. I say you forgot how much you shine, so that what makes you shine actually creates pain. Interesting, the metal man shines. It's like it reflects the light, it doesn't absorb it, it doesn't represent it. It's heavy and dense. Again, I'm showing those blue granules, this sand, that you really sparkle, and that is your true light, and there's no pain in the light that you are. And you've caught my eye. And I'm not saying this in a way that is trying to create, a, I don't know, praise. Because, a, because genuine truth is not praise. It's like it is what it is. I mean, you really do sparkle. I'm not just saying that to compliment you. 
it's the truth, actually. <laughs> and it's not because I added the sparkle there. It's because it was always there to begin with. You just wouldn't allow yourself to see it. Now I'm going to have to amplify the sparkle and that's going to feel painful, but it's not real. It's all an illusion. It's not painful to be yourself. It's painful to be not yourself. Then to try to be yourself again is going to feel painful because it's change. <laughs> I'm going to have to do a few other things. Still the skin on the outside, okay? On the inside, I'm really amplifying the sparkle. I feel like there's another deeper layer. Because we had this layer, right, with the rainbow pulling the energies down through your body into the earth. That is still taking place as I go into a deeper layer where we are interacting with ego, okay? And now that I'm creating the sparkle within the ego, we're um, transforming the relationship with love and pain, which is really just you embracing you at the ego level, helping you to grow again, helping you to continue on your path. The ego is not holding you back. No wonder the pressure build up in the head, right? Now, as that's happening, we're going to go a little bit deeper, like we're going to go to yet another space. Yes, yes, okay. So this space, is it um, dark and disturbing or is it flourishing, okay, and bright and beautiful? Which one is it? I want to hear what your response is to me, okay? I'm asking you, the inner you, I'm asking the inner you, what is it? What do you, do you say? Is it dark and disturbing or is it beautiful, illuminating? And, and both answers are correct, but which one would you, would you like to say it is if we could only choose one? And then we're going to go into that doorway, okay? And it's safe to choose either one. Um, we're going to take the correct path. So if your insecurity is, um, of course it's beautiful and bright. I'll know the difference so we can go in there and see how ugly it really is, okay? Because we're going to see your insecurity. But if it's like, I'm safe to say that it's painful, it's dark, it's in the shadow, we're going to go in there and we're going to work through that too. I don't know though. I have no idea what it's going to mean to you. And so I'm asking you. You say... You say you disagree with both interpretations. And what you do is you take the bright and beautiful and the dark and, and dreary and then you merge them together and like clay, you, you kind of blend them together into a mold and shapeable like clay ball. And it's just like a neutral color. It's just like a, a white, I guess, but it's not even white. It's like a grayish white. And you show me that you want to mold and shape something that hasn't been seen before. And I say, cool. What is it? You say, oh my gosh. I don't have to choose the path that, as though it is there already. Like that I exist in the path as it is created around me. That you are giving me the opportunity to build my own sort of path around myself. And you are not able to decide if it looks kind of like the Emerald City, but the, but it's different. I mean, there's something about the trees and there's emeralds um, kind of like shimmery and shiny. Everything seems to be made out of shimmery and shiny and it's green, but it seems like green crystal or emerald. And then... The other also seems to be made out of like shiny stones. And this is the ocean is made out of like blue stones, but there seems to be a very large ship and the air, it's sort of like captured in the sail and the air is helping the ship to propel forward. And it just feels wonderful. And the breeze that's sort of blowing in, you know, your hair in this majestic moment on the big ship and everything is glamorous and sparkling like, like a brand new day. Like, like what makes life really sparkle is all around you. And then you created that idea and it was, it came from you. It came from your heart. And it's like, oh, this sort of enchanted forest, like emerald forest or this ocean scene with the vastness and the moving forward and the fresh breeze in my face and everything is shining. And you're actually deciding. I say, well, look at you go. 
That's great. Hmm. But what's interesting is what we didn't expect. Let's say we, we have this emerald shiny, we have this like blue shiny, boat brown, boat shiny. Um, but in between, there's something else, okay? And I keep hearing the wor word, but it's dead. But it's dead, okay? And it's just like keep saying that, but it's dead. But it's dead, okay? I keep saying that. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going into the words, but it's dead. And these two worlds become like walls. And I'm on actually a black river, and I'm going towards the sound of, but it's dead. And it's going to be hard for you to reach the wonderment or the sparkle of life um, that comes from the, your own design, comes from the manifestation of your own hands. Um, it's going to be hard to really access and be um, dimensionally connected with that wrapped around you until we take this sort of dark um, river into the mouth of like this voice of, but it's dead. But we're stuck in time as well. And the boat actually starts to turn backward um, counterclockwise. It actually lifts out of the water and we're in a, in the boat and it just starts to turn backwards. It just starts to like a, like a wheel, okay? It starts to turn like this and we don't know what to make of it. We don't know what to make of any of this. And there's something spiteful, something of the heart. It's like a snaggle tooth. I don't know why snaggle tooth, but it's just like a mouth with one long sharp tooth. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to let it in. It's like a saber-toothed tiger that only has one long tooth and it wants to rip you apart. It hates you with all of its heart, with all of its soul. And we're just stuck in this weird wheel and it's like a bad dream. And so I'm going to let it dissect you basically with its, its snaggle tooth, but also its claws. And I show it, it's like, you're not getting anywhere, are you? Because it could, it could rip you apart all day long and you just, it's never gotten anywhere. Only it creates the illusion that it did, but you, you just, you're just like untouchable. You're unharmable. <laughs> and it desperately needs to harm you to find relief, which I find strange. But what I'm called to do is to, um, it's almost like echo to this saber tooth tiger, what it feels like to not have what you want. And for you to know that you're safe and nobody can rip you apart. Did you want that? Did you want to feel safe? And I start to hear the screaming from the saber tooth because it's so empty inside. You can't get what it wants out of you. Remember, it is a part of you. It's something inside your self-unresolved pain, okay? I try so hard to give it what it wants, like in, in an illusionary space. Like we can go into this safe space here. Now you can you can feed yourself with this like final venting, but it's just absolutely not allowed. And I feel the saber tooth then is being tortured by this. I mean, it's agonizing screaming taking place. It's almost like what could be an eternity of ripping you apart is now ripping it, it's, it apart. And it is just screaming in agony. And it's really hard to listen to. I also hear and sense and experience myself being burned alive by acid and I'm screaming oh, through this process and it's not very fun. 
again, the original scene, right? The rainbow color is the salve, the, the light is going through the pressure points and the energies of resistance. We're, we're guiding those through the body and out the feet and to Mother Earth, okay? That's what we're doing there. I'm still a part of the skin of the Bulletproof You, where we're bringing the sparkle out on the inside and letting ego know it's safe to just um, soften up, okay? And let you just sparkle and glow the way that you, you genuinely represent is the true you, okay? And now here in this other space, which is just going deeper and deeper in the tears within yourself, we have the pathway of um, the, the ocean scene, the big boat and the emerald forest, and then the black river and the boat that's circulating backwards, like counterclockwise. It's like time going backward. And then we have this awful saber tooth that's just literally not sinking in the, in the black river, just sort of on top of it, wailing and screaming, like shrieking. I, I look into the shrieking and it's being ripped apart forever and ever and ever and ever. And then we have this sort of numb you that's safe to never be ripped apart again, but feels basically nothing. So I take a leaf from the, one of these emerald trees and I place it into this sort of numb you, okay, into the heart of this numb you. And I take um, a little piece of this sort of sparkly blue ocean and then I, I place it into the third eye of the saber-toothed tiger. And the saber tooth immediately looks at the numb you that actually starts to have feelings on the inside and you start to radiate and glow. And somehow when you look at one another, you start to merge together, just like the dark and light sides that became the clay ball that you merged it all together. You brought it all together. You created the beautiful paths. You both did. When you learned how to come together, you created the beautiful paths. But in doing so, you achieve something together and God forbid that happen. So now we have to go through this internal battle of resisting the beauty that happens when you work together. Now coming into realization and oneness yet again with yourself. So now the voice that says, um, but it's dead is now saying, but it is alive. But it is alive. Almost as if, but it's dead. It's, it's never coming back to life, <gasps> but it's alive like this. There's a strange being made out of white that's coming um, from basically where we were headed down this river. It is coming from that, that path towards us. The boat is still spinning, not so quickly. It just, it just doesn't feel like its purpose is the same. Something's changing there. And then this being is coming towards us. And this being is odd. I don't know if he... I don't know what he is exactly. He has a huge body, huge face, huge body, huge beard. You know what? You know what he unexpectedly reminds me of? Give me a second. It will come to me. It is a name of a type of being. Anunnaki. He's a, he reminds me of an Anunnaki. And my experience with the Anunnaki is actually like a benevolent future race of human beings that absolutely loves us. It's like our future selves. That's my experience with them. I don't experience the cruelty, twisted, reptilian, shapeshifter garbage. I actually experience God-level love, pure love and radiance. And I thought, oh, who's this? Who's this? Made out of white. Made out of white, but... The closer he gets, the more he looks like, a, you know, in Harry Potter, the giant guy. He lives like on the outskirts. What's his name? Um, looks kind of like him. <laughs> has a big beard and a big face and a big body and he's a giant. And he's, he's heavy for a reason. I feel his weight on his feet and he's heavy on his feet. And he walks on top of the water as well, like the saber tooth. And we're all basically on top of the water, like it's a ground. 
But something is still unresolved as he continues to come towards us. Because you're... There has to be the, the development of a certain type of trust. And I, I know that word, we could really define that a lot better. But um, something about how do, how do we define him for you? And how do we interpret trust? And how do we work with love? And how, does, how can we count on love? How do we not become betrayed by love? How do we not betray ourselves? How do we build trust with ourselves? How do we believe in ourselves? How do we love ourselves? So you see, there's this like development of um, a, a deep sort of um, reconciliation of of your life. I mean, it's a, literally a total reconciliation of of the whole you. Okay. <sighs> He's nice. He's very nice. But it's hard to appreciate him because there's a there's muting, there's muted sounds like there's pockets where the sounds get muted and then it's hard to know for sure. It just does that. Then it's hard to know for sure. If it's muted, you can't tell for sure. So you're going to work with your fantasy and then work with what you think it might be based upon really the mirror inside yourself. You're only going to know um, once those pockets of, of numbness clear, you're actually going to be able to know. Okay. Do you want those pockets to clear? You want those pockets to clear. And I'm talking to you glowing with the emerald, you growing with, with the blue sapphire, whatever. It's like you're both get together as one, trying to be solid with yourself. Maybe that's the bulletproof self because you want to be solid with yourself. But in doing so, there's an insecurity at the ego level here. Um, and then it's building up this pressure in your head because really you're actually going through, I mean, you literally are going through the ceiling of what you've reached a ceiling. Like you're moving through that. Okay. You're literally like a bor being born again. Okay. Give in, just give in, just give in. And I say that and I, I'm helping you because I'm in, in your body and the boat has stopped turning and I'm having you look into his eyes as these pockets don't exist unless you let them exist. But if you could just look into his eyes, you will start to receive clarity. You'll start to feel it and see it, okay? And it's easy. There's nothing in the way of this. Not even yourself, because your soul is connected. It's so meaningful. It's the most meaningful kind of love there is, and there's no pain in it. Zero. It really is the love that we always hoped it would be. It's just really flipping kind. You know, you ever meet somebody, you don't even know this person, but... They are so flipping kind. Like, thank God you're on. Thank God for you. Like, thank God for you. That's what this man's like. So flipping kind. Like, thank God that you and your kindness are real. Like, that gives me something. Gives me something real. <sighs> Thank you. Oh my God, he's got the nicest eyes and the nicest smile. He's so kind. He's just like that character from Harry Potter. He's, he really is such a sweetheart. But he's, he's bright and he's smart, he's clever. But he's not putting that at the forefront. He's putting his gentleness, his compassion, and his sweet nature Ugh. his eyes would make you melt his smile is just like as wholesome as fresh baked cookies like he's so kind you're letting it in 
It's just reaching out, reaching out for you. No fear. Only the, the only fear is just the parts that have been hurt for too long that spend too long without the light, right? That's the only fear that exists. Guiding you to, to him who just wants to give you the biggest, best hug in the whole universe. Say how proud he is of you. Rising up to meet him off the ground. I mean, he's a giant guy and he's got big arms, right? And you're like a stuffed animal like to a kid. And it's just the weirdest picture because he's like, like it, he's like a full-fledged man with a big old beard. He's like this giant man. And he's got this great, just, just wonderful eyes, wonderful smile. And here you're, you're like this little person going up and, and then he like hugs you like a teddy bear to a child like and he just hugs you and again we're working on opening the heart and any of the fears it's feel those fears feel those resistance to trusting in this kind of love is real this kind of love is real you know this kind of real love is real you know this that you wouldn't have to lift a finger that this this kind of love would lift the fingers for you like using their own hands to help you it's really nice to feel like someone else can help you for once it's that kind of feeling that he emanates it's a it's an ultra relaxation of all of your sort of tight like tight little parts of your energy field, tight parts in your physical body, your muscles, your bones even. <laughs> tight part in the bone. Oh yeah, there's tight parts in those bones. It's like tight parts. It's just little stalks of little specks of energy that just get like clench like that, okay? And it's like, yeah. Exhale. Yeah. Like that. He's proud of you and he wants you to feel, it's like these two worlds are beautiful that you created, but they also create separation and conflict because you will have to choose one over the other and then you will wonder if you chose the right path. And they're both sort of alluring and because they're alluring, it's um, kind of lacking in real reality. Um, although the reality is absolutely there, there has to be a richness in the reality. <sighs> you find yourself more attracted to the boat. And we're talking like a big pirate ship like boat, like, I don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Really big boat on the ocean. And the boat is, boat is guiding you, the wind is guiding you, the sun guiding you, the stars guiding you. It's really nice when it feels like, um, in the Emerald Forest, you, you will have to find your own way. And it seems like every way is beautiful, but it, it also seems like you, you want to have a path kind of paved for yourself. And the boat, you are on the boat that is guided by the wind, that is guided by the stars and gods. Like, it feels like it guides itself, okay? And it's taking you where you need to go. It's like a, like a feeling that enriches. And interestingly enough, it, it was like, oh, we're going to have to choose one. So neither of these are a good choice because they're going to create conflict. But now that we've, it's like you found yourself on the boat and it was safe to do that and to sort of reflect on both scenes it was quite quick to let go of the emerald forest and for you both both the halves of you combined actually to embrace the boat together and i see this man becomes the ocean becomes the wind becomes the sun becomes the boat becomes a part of your heart and it gives you comfort So we're taking this achievement, right? It's a wholeness, wholeness, right? And we're bringing it into this inner sparkle and letting it just fill in the spaces. 
And I hear the sort of sound of the, I guess, this metal man just sort of, sh it's like a shattering and then collapsing to the ground. And you look like yourself. And you're smiling and he's saying, I'm free. And he's saying, it's okay to be me. And it's okay to resist growing. And it's okay to give in to growing. And I'm okay with me. And we start to find you smiling with the rainbow just sort of in and around your head. And whatever no longer serves your purpose is going into earth. And you feel grounded. And the weight of that strong man or that Anunnaki energy is moving through your body. Um, and it's helping you to feel close to this planet, strong in your walk here on earth. And it is a supportive guide for you. And I'm just like, <gasps> yay! I'm like celebrating you. It's great. It's like such an achievement. <sighs> it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much for this, truly. Just let this do the circulation, okay? If there's any more pressure, like, can you see how this pressure is actually guiding you to achieve, like, literally an ascension event? And so these pressure points that make us nervous, make us fearful, make us like, get, I, I can't deal with this, something's not right here, is actually guiding you to a whole plethora of self-awareness. And I'm really honored to be able to help you with this. And thank you for sharing because anybody watching this session is going to experience something of that within themselves. So thank you. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. And I wish you an amazing day.